Welcome to Second Sight, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. There is a growing determination among some municipalities to begin building and procuring their own electricity to reduce their dependence on ESCOM. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the prospects in this regard. Hi Terence. Hi Sashni. Now, why are some municipalities keen to begin building or procuring um, electricity from non-ESCOM sources? Well, electricity used to be the cash cow for many municipalities, but that cash cow has been getting thinner and thinner over the last number of years and is actually becoming a burden for some municipalities. They're in a real squeeze because they've got the rising tariffs from Eskom that NERSA grants on a, a cycle through the multi-year price determination. They are bound not to go much beyond that, even though they can, if they can prove that they've got costs that they, they need to incur beyond just passing that tariff through to the consumer. But there's a lot of scrutiny and there's a lot of resistance. And some municipalities have got tariffs that are way above uh, th that level, but they're also having a very big problem of, of revenue collection. So they're in this process, much like Eskom in a, what people talk about a utility death spiral, spiral. many of the municipal uh, um, utilities are also in something like a death spiral where they're getting squeezed on the, uh, high with higher and higher costs and then their revenues are under pressure because they're battling with revenue collection. So they're looking at diversifying their sources of supply. They want to, they, they obviously Eskom's going to be their main supplier, mm -hmm. but uh, th those costs are totally out of their control. They're determined by the, the regulator, as I said, and they would like to procure directly with municipality where they have some price pass visibility and then use that uh, visibility, that more certainty, to also start transforming the way they uh, sell electricity. At the moment, it's kilowatt hours based, so it's a volume based tariff. They want to make it more of a service, so to have a much more robust uh, tariff structure. And I think they feel that if they've got these diverse sources, which one would be Eskom, then there'd be the RPPs, then there would be small households and consumers that would be able to feed back into the grid. Through that, they would be able to transition in a way, create the incentives, create the, the visibility for those customers that are now prosumers to agree to a more of a service-based uh, tariff structure. So it's part of a bigger strategy, I think, for many of the municipalities to try and mitigate uh, what has become a serious risk to their, their revenue. And it actually, in some instance, is instances, is a real drain on the municipality. And the City of Cape Town has advanced pl plans in this regard. The yes, City of Cape Town is at the vanguard of this struggle. They've taken the matter to court. They want the, minister, they want the right to procure directly from RPPs. Uh, they also want to, they are already continuing with uh, procurement uh, from, uh, or, or buying electricity uh, through uh, the uh, consumers, so big businesses, households. Mm -hmm. There's already a process underway, but the next step for them is to get large-scale RPPs or to build their own capacity. Uh, obviously, this is a business that the RPPs know better, so on the whole, municipalities want to rather procure, have a PPA, have price pass visibility over sort of a 15, 20-year horizon. And uh, the, at the moment, they are unable to do that because of the regulatory constraints. They uh, took that matter to court, saying that they should have a right to begin procuring um, in terms of the different legislation. But the judge decided that they hadn't exhausted all the cooperative government uh, mechanisms, intergovernment relationships. Obviously, it's a DA municipality uh, with an ANC national department. And they felt, the, the judge said, you know, you need to exhaust those processes of trying to get to a, a resolution. So that's where we're at at the moment, a process of trying to get to a resolution where Cape Town can begin procuring its own electricity. Uh, but the judge left the door open to, the, 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 to any of the parties that if resolution isn't found, they can reapproach the court for some sort of clar uh, for clarity on where this stands. If they do get that right, it will open the doors not only for the uh, uh, city of Cape Town, but for other municipalities that are champ champing at the bit to begin procuring electricity from RPPs. And the structure could be interesting. One of the proposals that, that part of the RP is set aside, not for Eskom as a single buyer, but for municipalities as the buyer. Uh, so it's within the national framework of the integrated resource plan, not trying to go their own direction, 
but having a, sp a set aside almost for municipalities to begin procuring within that framework. And uh, at the same time, looking at doing some of their own building options. And then there's a parallel process which uh, is underway where the government is looking at changing the regulation. We know that the president and the state of the nation said that self-generation is a big uh, thrust, but so is municipal procurement, municipalities in good standing, in uh, financial standing, he emphasized. So there is a process underway of amending the regulations and uh, Minister Gwede Mantash has put out uh, those amendments for public comment and we await to see what changes could happen. But uh, the initial response to the amended regulations uh, was that uh, it was unlikely to give the municipalities the freedom they're looking at in this area. And what needs to happen to unlock these opportunities? Well, I think the easiest way would be to have regulations that everyone agree with, uh, uh, to amend the regulations in a way that it makes it much more clear as to what municipalities are allowed to do in this space. Uh, and uh, rather than having to get the courts involved, this are te these are very challenging technical problems. Uh, the, the regulator has to be involved in licensing these uh, new generators. Uh, it would be better that uh, fr uh, the framework uh, comes from a uh, process of engagement, I think, involving people like Cape Town, involving uh, the national government to find a sort of a win-win solution. There's no doubt that it is important for the municipalities to get resolution on this. As I mentioned up front, this has become a major risk factor for municipalities, but it's also a major opportunity. So if, uh, for municipalities to, to you know, uh, not only to, uh, to have these diverse so sources of supply to begin transitioning to a, a more robust tariff structure, but also for them, they need to start, they've made commitments in terms of cleaning up mm -hmm. their cities, wanting to buy clean energy, wanting to buy renewable energy, wanting to be net neutral by 2050, like uh, uh, net carbon neutral, like Cape Town has a line in the sand. So that these are all important processes for them. Uh, I think a, a, a resolution, a negotiated resolution would be best. But ultimately, if it doesn't come, I think we're going to be uh, seeing some of the municipalities, Cape Town in particular, heading back to the courts. Thanks for speaking with us, Chair. Pleasure. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.